we just met and it was like, yeah, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Havana. What? What, <laughs> what does it feel like when you meet people like that? Like, why do you think we as humans have that thing where we connect? The way we actually move around the swag that we have a Cuban, you know, the I really, Cuban I, the, swag. The Cuban swag. I actually realized right away that you were also from Cuba. Really? You know, uh -huh. Yeah, and it was actually a very happy thing because you know that day we were in, in that party in a way, you know, what kind of different type of culture for us. And uh, as soon as I met you and Sissy, I said, "Ooh, now I feel connected. I feel like now part of home here." Yeah. It was good. Also, it was great to hear your story as well. You know, I really connected with you as well. Yeah. So I was really inspired by you and what was interesting was that when they asked, oh, tell me about Cuba and you said, well, I'm going to tell you about my Cuban experience. Mm -hmm. And you said he probably has a completely different experience. So tell me about your specific experience in coming to America. Mm -hmm. How were you able to completely mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. adopt this new culture? and excel at the highest level with your profession? You know, I, 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 have, I have something that, I, that, I, that made me, you know, very sinful, is that I, I, my parents create certain value for me, that, I, you know, they create a platform that I have been continued to, to build over. And uh, also the structure that I had in the music conservatory that I had, that was also very awesome. In Cuba, we have different levels of, of education. You go to elementary school of music first, and you have it like, with seven, eight years old, you are exposed to Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Baroque, Classicism, and then by the time you finish the whole structure of, of education, you finish like a, you know, hmm, I'm a very, I have, I have music under, under my knees that I feel very in control. So when you actually do a transition to come to the United States, it's basically just to, you know, understand the new language, understand that you have to put the time, to put the time to understand the new culture, to absorb that this is not longer your own Cuban culture, that, are, that you are someone who are coming to actually to adapt into a new world, but if you're coming with that mentality, open-minded to, to know that, uh, that uh, you are coming to add, not to actually to absorb everything, not to tell you, you know, so in a way, uh, that, this is what worked for me, the, the easiest way to, to do a transition. Also, that was sinful enough that uh, when I came here to the United States in 2010, I, I came to do uh, my second college here in New York, in, in, in United States, in Boston. I, I came to do Berkeley College of Music. So I had the opportunity to be for three years, not paying rent, uh, you know, studying, very focused in absorbing the language, the English language, being able to study, being able to actually have the time to do the transition, it wasn't that hard for me. Sometimes when you when you actually are thrown into a new culture and you have to start working right away, you have to uh, find your way to, to survive, it can be very shocking. Mm -hmm. But for me, I had the opportunity to have three years of education to be able to actually, you know, find a, fi find a partner. But at the time, my former wife, and being able to you know, to, to, to have a, an easier transition yeah. into the United States. In my experience, it was completely different. <laughs> I came to, from a film festival. I went to a film festival in Canada, and I ran away from the festival, defected, came on the border. You know, like the cop pulled up a gun on oh, sure. us when we were coming in, and we had a completely different experience. But it's interesting that you're saying you were trying to add to the culture, not to absorb. No, no, not to absorb. I was adding, I wanted to add, not to, to impose, impose, impose my thing. Because, you know, we, as a culture, Cuban culture, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we, we are a very predominant type of culture. You know, yeah. musical wise is a powerhouse. Cultural wise is very strong culture. You know, we are macho. We are, you know, we, we have yeah. a lot of something that is very, very, you know, in a way, you know, we have good pride of, of looking good. And, you know, we very well spoken that we know how to dance. You know, we, we have some more stuff that are we, that are we, the world might say that we are good at it, that, that you know, at some point you believe in it, right? Say. So, uh, so, but I understood that I didn't want to come here to impose my will or impose my culture. I wanted I to add and see how actually, how open the United States was actually a, a open to let me in. You Completely know? understand uh, that. For me, I was trying, in a way, I was trying to move away from my culture mm. because with my upbringing, we were so poor and every, everything was so difficult. And the, the challenge that I had, which I guess is different, for you, you started studying early on, studying music, your parents were musicians, so you had that... Environment, that, that, that culture yes. around me, yeah. For me, 
I really loved movies and I wanted to make movies. My parents were doctors mm -hmm. and I grew up in the Christian church. So we were a bit isolated from the culture as a whole. And my problem was I wanted to speak up and I was getting in trouble at school mm -hmm. because I was like, why are things this way? Mm -hmm. Why can we not do this? We need to do that. So I was going against like the norm mm -hmm. and that got me a little bit in trouble. Mm -hmm. So I almost wanted to leave to escape mm -hmm. the not being able to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, you know, like the first time I went out with a camera to try to film things, <laughs> it was during the elections, you know, when they do the new elections uh -huh. and we got the cops call on us because, you know, some kids with cameras mm -hmm. filming. So in you Cuba. Know, in Cuba, yeah, in Cuba, yeah, yeah. Stop. You know, every time you have a camera, camera you feel like you are attacked. They feel that you are attacking them. Yes, and this was back in like over 12, 13 years ago. So it was a long time ago. Now it's very okay, different. Yeah, it's more loose. So I had a completely different experience. Now I'm curious to know. You keep going back and forth, and you have like this uh, very, very interesting combination of you yeah. are Cuban 120 percent. But you're also almost, I feel like you're a citizen of the world by this time. Mm -hmm. How does that influence your music? Totally, totally. No, it has an impact. For me, I will say, I, I, I continue to say it, that uh, till these days, and I have been here in the United States since 2010, uh, you know, 13 years already. For me, still the United States is a working place. Still, it's still not home for it's me. It's not home? It's not yet home for me because every time I take that plane JetBlue from Havana to New York or we're coming from uh, Paris to New York, when I come back to the, to, to the United States in general, when I live in New York you now, mm -hmm. I feel that I'm always sending emails, organizing, practicing, <laughs> next, next goal, next concert, ah, next goal, I want to achieve this much, I want to be seen, I want to perform it. It's always, ah, I have never had this opportunity to say, okay, I'm coming home to relax. So when I'm in, in the United States, I feel that a competition, that, 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 that competition with myself, that I know that I can't be sleeping that much watching Netflix, mm -hmm. because I know that uh, my, my fellows, the pianists that I admire, mm -hmm. they are touring, they are performing, they are practicing at the time at the time that you are watching Netflix. So, you know what I mean. So for mm -hmm. me, that that sense of relaxing, I go home. I have a very very you know. I'm trying to even not have TV at home to be able to create an structure that is working. You know, because I came to the United States. Let's say we decided to left our comfort zone, which is Cuba, at least for me, you know, home is Cuba, for me still being Cuba, uh, to come to, to conquer something here, to be able to demonstrate something that you actually uh, want to bring your career to the next level, to achieve uh, power, to achieve money, to achieve career success, to achieve some, achieve some awards, recognition, wider recognition. And, uh, and I believe that uh, there's no time to be relaxed yet. Yeah. That's because, the American way. Yeah, that's the American way. That's exactly it. Because, you know, when you go to Paris, I see my friends in Madrid. They see my friends in Paris, you know, in Switzerland, anywhere in Europe. That is a different approach. Yeah, you know, it's a different you're, you're vibe. Bit, a bit of different vibe. You know, take your time. I don't have a little beer, you know, then, you know, tomorrow is tomorrow. No, in the in the US, you you know, you live for you live for work, you know, you live yeah. to work, you live to work. So we are here conquering, achieving what okay, we finished this this tour, was amazing, money wise, recognition wise, we had a good press. So what's the next tour? And now I made this much money, and I wanna make the next one. I got this Grammy and now I wanna get a second Grammy. So but in a way it had been good because my career, my music itself, have really evolved in such a good way because I have been putting myself in a position that I don't want to be comfortable. So when you feel comfortable, you feel like you are retiring, you are, you are too comfortable, you conquer, you already did. No, I haven't done nothing. I feel like, I, would you see those, those much accolades that I, that I have? I still are good, but uh, oh, there is so many more that I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So in a way, in the United States, I feel that I'm, it's not, it's not home for me, you know, it's still not home for me. That's very interesting. So. For me, it's the opposite. I, I go to Cuba and like my family is there. I haven't been back in almost six years and I'm really excited because I'm going next month to see my family. But when I come to America, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm back home mm -hmm. and I feel very grateful. It's like the, this huge wave of gratitude comes over me 
and I have a little moment of that, like 30 seconds of gratitude, and then I enter into the, the they, super they speed of like, well, you better take advantage of the opportunity that you have, you know? Like, I'm just coming from the country where so many people are struggling and they want what you have, yeah. the chance to come to America. Right. So you better put on, you better put out, right. you better make right. sure that you're taking advantage of everything. Right. And in my case, it's like being here, Hollywood, you know, like I love film. That's my, I guess for you, loving jazz and music, no, New no, York I mean, is, New York, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I just, the last, we are in April now. Last November, I did my debut concert at Lincoln Center, New York. Oof. So as a, as a jazz musician, I, you know, I called my mom, mom, I made it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did perform as a leader at Carnegie Hall. And then New York Times, Wall Street Journal, New York, put in my face, along with Chucho Valdez, one of my biggest heroes. Wow. So I, I, I have been doing Blue Note, I have been touring the world, I have been, you know, having the best press in the United States talking, you know. A, 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 a you, you know, I think you need to take a, a second right now. You open Carnegie Hall and you had the Wall Street Journal put out an article <laughs> Like, I'm getting the shells, and I'm not a musician. Yeah, I feel sinful. You know, I, that is, I'm so happy for you. That is remarkable. Yeah, I, 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 I you know, see, 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 I, I feel sinful. I, n nothing has have, have been given to me. Mm -hmm. I have put a lot of hours, a lot of time. I have cried a lot. I have really focused. I have prepared a plan. I have been a very focused, tonal focus in that plan. I did the transition to be a musician, to become an artist. An artist is the one who is no longer the pianist who plays. Now you are a, 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 a cultural ambassador to Cuba. You are now someone who, a, your words had, had an impact on the audience that you have. Now I'm someone that the, the way I dress, I have people that follow that. I'm, I, you know, I was the first Cuban, national Cuban, living in El Cerro, Havana, to actually go from El Cerro all the way to Berkeley College of Music as a presidential scholarship. So after me, there is six, seven, eight more Cubans who have entered, entered Berkeley, and they grind me that they say that they follow, that they feel completely uh, 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 inspired that I was able to open the door to let them believe that inside Cuba or from Miami, from anywhere, but as a Cuban, that you can actually enter one of the one of the best uh, schools uh, in, in the world, and uh, I feel very very happy to see that uh, that I'm that I'm someone who inspired the youth. So in regard to, uh, mm -hmm. I was curious when you were saying all of that. I was wondering, what did you have to sacrifice to achieve what you have achieved? See, one is to be very selective with the people I wanted to have around me. I am very, very, very uh, uh, clear of you know what what type of people I want around me. What I mean about that is like a, I believe that I want to be surrounded with people that are on my level of understanding or even better than me that have conquered the same or more than I. People that I love to read, people that I love to to appreciate having the time uh, uh, or, or, or putting or putting the extra having the time to put in the extra. People who are mentally focused, focused in what they do. And you can see that, you know, you're hanging with a friend and this friend is saying, okay, well, let's go to bars, let's have beers, let's have this and that. And you don't see that this guy is really 100% focused in what he needs to do and he's not conquering what I want. So for me, that's it's not that as inspiring to hang with this person. So, uh, uh, because I always said, you know, we are hearing a mentality that we wanna focus and conquer certain things, right? So I've been able to, you know, we say we can control the family that we have your parents, but you can actually choose the wife that you want to have, the people that you want around you, the friend that you want to have around. That's that one. The other thing is that I have sacrificed, sacrificed is that uh, a putting the time, putting the time to the instrument, to be the best PhD doctor that I can be in my instrument, that I, that I feel that I can actually play classical piano, that I can play anything on my instrument as a vocabulary, that I can speak as fast as I want, as slow, as tender, as romantic, as uh, you know, have different type of expression through my instrument. So in order to do that, you have to put a lot of time to actually uh, control the instrument. And the third element is that I always had that uh, immense desire. That's a personal desire mm -hmm. to, to immense desire to succeed. 
immense desire to succeed. That not Lord or anything. That that means that I, that's something that goes with the individual. That you say, I want to put the time to be very well spoken English wise. I came here today and say, I want to actually speak the language well. I want to be able to 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 express myself cultural wise, social wise, political wise, anything about I want. You know, I want to es- express it well and put the time to do it. And the same with my instrument. You know that I feel that you know. That be able to do it. So I would say that uh, in order to sacrifice it, uh, is to is to be selective with the person, the people that you want to have around you. Second one is to put the time uh, to to actually have control, fully control, expression wise, to with your instrument, so you can actually speak any any subject, politics, cultural. Uh, you know, you can actually speak any subject with your instrument. Mm-hmm. And the third thing is that thing that you have internal you is that that. That that a uh, little voice that uh, that uh, lets you that uh, doesn't let you relax too much. That you know that uh, you're here with a mindset and, and it's happening. Yeah, immense desire. An immense desire to succeed. How do you handle that? And then, are you ever afraid of failure? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, afraid of failure. I I, I was very af- afraid of failure many years ago when I was younger. Now understand that failure is a way as well to learn and that, that we can control everything. I want to control as much as I can. I'm very controlling in terms of mm-hmm. in the next three months, I'm going to drop this album and I want to do this tour around this album. I want to have this PR uh, team around this album because if we drop the album without the tour, we won't be able to sell as much, as much uh, CDs. So uh, how many CDs are we going to do? The platform, Spotify, Apple Music has to be ready. Okay, then we have to be able to, to have on camera, a, a little APK of what I'm going So I wanted to control as much as I can. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the PR doesn't fall, so fall through. Then what you need to do, cry about it, or you actually do what I have done many times. I do PR for myself. I mm-hmm. say, okay, I will check my competitors. Who I will say my fellows. Who are my fellows? You know, the musicians that I admire the most. Uh, Alfredo Rodriguez, Harold Lopez Nusa, uh, Emmett Cohen, Axel Augard, um, you know, you name it. A lot of musicians that I have, David Vireles, uh, musicians that I, uh, of my generation that I admire, that are doing beautiful careers. Okay, Pedrito Martinez, and then I say, okay, who are the, the writers, the New York Times, the, 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 the writers that are writing about their career? Most likely, that writer, journalist, is going to write about me because I'm a similar artists with a similar background, not the same, but a similar background, similar age, similar background. That means that at, in Twitter or Instagram, I'm sure that this guy is approachable. Mm-hmm. So I actually do the homework to make an Excel sheet and put down all the all the major publications where I want to be featured, where I love to be featured. New York Times, LA Times, Wall Street Journal, Downbeat Magazine, uh, and you name it. And then I put it, and then who are the people who have been writing similar mm-hmm. artists, similar articles, to, to an artist similar than I. Mm-hmm. Then I would say, Axel, I saw that you wrote something about Chucho Valdez. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm independent, Cuban pianist and composer. You don't know me, but I, but I, but I have this uh, proud album that I put, and I feel very proud about it. I believe that, I, you know, if you have the time, I would love that I, you consider to listen to it. I send you an email, or I send you a WhatsApp, mm-hmm. or, I, I mean, or, I, or I approach you, you don't answer. I politely approach you again mm-hmm. <laughs> three days after, and then because I'm not sending you anything that I don't believe that has a, has of a course, level so. of integrity, sincerity that has a, a, a strong background, a strong a presence in the background of Cuban music, and also knowing that Cuba, Cuban music, Cuban culture in general is so well is so well respected around the world mm-hmm. that I know that when you say the word Cuba, people will listen, people listen. So the first approach is to get them to listen to the album. And then to see if they are, you know, they find the time to link with the editor to write down about it. Yeah, that's very interesting. And it's exactly the same thing that we do for every project. So uh, with one of my feature documentaries, it's about tattoos. So I created a whole spreadsheet of all of these tattoo artists and I would send them messages, send basically exactly what you said. That's very interesting. I think many people think that to be successful, especially in the arts, you need to have a lot of talent and luck and some and, and a lot of agents and a lot of agents, a lot of booking people around right. you and not necessarily ha- not always happen the same. Yeah, you have to create your own ah. destiny and create your own plan. And it's not manifestation, it's not meditation, it's not mm. let me pray mm. and make things happen. Is 
you have a plan, you have a goal, you have a strategy, you do specific things. And I, I hope every artist that is listening and every person that looks up to you can also appreciate that it's not only talent and it's a God-given thing. No, it's like you put in the work and, and you have a strategy and you're in control of that. Talent, talent give you, take you this much, this, this, this long, this place, you know, but uh, there is so many filmmakers, so many art directors, so many pianists, so many successful players. It's just way too many already. So many actors, good actors. Uh, and then you go to freaking Juilliard and they continue having saxophone players every day. You have to, you go to a uh, Berkeley College of Music and every year you have, you go to Havana School of Music and you, you know, it's so many musicians, so many creators around. But what's gonna make you different? Mm -hmm. You know what's gonna make you different? different? Your story, brother. If you understand, that you put, to, put, put the time, you put the time to understand your story. What, what type of music your parents were listening to? What, let's put it in, into the music. Yeah. What type of music you, the parents listened to? What type of environment you were uh, uh, exposed to? Uh, did your parents uh, divorce or not? Were you coming, uh, were you part of a, of a family that were uh, somewhere, you know, uh, good or not? So all of that is part of your story. What make you different? Uh, how can I help you? You know, all of that is is important. It's important to have a to have an, an story to back up your your pain because otherwise, when you sit, you like many artists that you hear, man, you you can play, but you don't really connect with me. Mm -hmm. You are not connecting because you are playing just just to play. But when you do this. I'm telling you right there that I'm a black man that has a good strong background from the Afro uh, uh, West African influences and uh, I coming from also have a strong background in, in a, a European classical music and I have also I'm Cuban so I have the mm -hmm. Cuban contradanza I have the Cuban timba so through the music you can actually tell who are the angles that make you different? Yeah, you know, it's like telling a story telling with the, the music. Telling story through the music. So I'm obsessed with music. I listen to it all the time. I wish I could have been a musician, but I made a, a decision early on because I loved images more. But I made so many music videos. Like music is part of my life in a big way. So I know that now you're experiencing in putting music to images and to films. So. Uh, there's a project that you have been a part of and a beautiful documentary and hopefully Secretly, <laughs> I'm hoping that I can in five years from now I can get you to write music for my films That's like I'm just letting you know now so you know Yeah, uh, hopefully come even earlier. Tell me about that experience of making music for a film and how was that? Yeah, uh, that, that, that's definitely quite a different type of angle because you don't you don't want to uh, with the music to impose certain feelings to the audience. You want the music to be there, but not so not not to be the one who is guiding the emotions. You want the the, the real actor being with the emotions and just the music to be a supporter. So to to have a good balance of that is a very very tricky to mm -hmm. have that. You know, you uh, uh, I learned from uh, you know my friend Gary Unger. And uh, I, that I, that is that I, you don't want the music to be influencing just too much the the, the experience, the emotion that that the the, the listen, you know the audience want to have. So uh, for me, have been a quite quite good 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 experience because uh, seeing seeing what I do is like I actually go through my own inner inner pain, my own frustration, my own love, but the stuff that I had, the experience that I have been able to to go through the whole life had have, have been able to. Uh, express it to put it to put it in the motion that uh, that the scene might require. So I try to actually make a, a, a connection to what I probably have experienced. If I haven't, then I call a friend and I say, "Bro, talk to me about that experience that you had because I wasn't a I don't know raped. You were, 
So I can't really speak to you, but I want, I want you to actually be naked to me and, and tell me how you experience that. And then try to relate to that and then putting actually music into that emotion. And then try to put myself into here. That has been my way to connect through to the main screen. That's beautiful. So, Daramir, <laughs> if you could do anything in life mm. and time was not an issue, money was not an issue, what would you do? Ooh. Travel, travel. I love traveling, traveling. I, I, I love traveling, I love connecting with culture. Uh, uh, I decided to live in New York. I'm Cuban, but I belong to the world, you know, I belong to the world. I decided to be in New York because, you know, my career has been spreading more there. But I can live in Paris, I can live in, in LA, I can live in Havana, back in Havana, no problem, right? You know, I, I, I don't really belong to a place. I believe that my music is a way to connect a lot of different type of people, and I have been, in, in many different places and I, I, you know, going to Japan and see, wow, and then going to Paris and see that uh, the, the same African sentiment have the same, or, 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 or that connection with people have been amazing. So traveling for me is a very amazing way to, to feel connected with myself even. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, bro. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, check out this other interview with my friend Dimitri Rivero. He's an amazing artist, and I'm 100% sure you're going to love it.